Hello, welcome back. This week I'm reading uh, a book entitled the Change, A Change of Pastor and How It Affects Change in the Congregation by Lauren Mead. Well, I'm reading it again. I think it's the third or fourth time I'm reading it. And if you haven't done it, I really encourage you to find it and read it. Anyway, in the book, the author th uh, talk about uh, times of transition in the congregation, as the title says, and how the, and talk about the void when a minister leaves and the expectation and the desire for new leadership about the congregant. And it was very interesting read because uh, I'm reading a lot of document from congregation looking for new ministers. And um, sometimes I'm reading what the congregation looked like for their new leaders. And it left me with the feeling that even Jesus himself would not be qualified and good enough to fill the position, you know perfect leadership excellence and everything and all of it all all of it except not too much of it and uh, don't want to rock the boat uh, don't want to have too much change so so you're looking for this very energetic uh, charismatic leader that will continue everything uh, but not too much it's very difficult sometimes to understand what the people want. I'm talking about congregation, but the same could be said about politics, regardless where you are. It seems that at least across the Western civilization, you have this um, thirst for change. People are saying we're fed up with career politician and traditional parties. Uh, uh, we want new people, fresh blood, uh, people that will tell the truth as they see it. And so, and, and in many places they elect someone like that. And once elected, well, the people say we don't like them. <laughs> They're not respecting the rules and the old traditions. Uh, we don't like their ideas or the, the change they are suggested. And by the end, they end up disappointed. I'm talking about that because uh, this week's texts come from the Gospel according to Luke chapter 4 verses 21 to 30, just following last week's uh, reading. Jesus in the synagogue just read, just read scripture. And uh, people are in awe. They, 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 they really think is wonderful, very charismatic. I'm sure people said, well, what a fresh new voice. He will be a great rabbi one day. And then Jesus continued to speak. It's, it's one of the, those patterns in gospel that Jesus started to speak. People are very happy. And then he continued to speak. And then something else happened. Well, in this case, start to speak about what he's seeing in this is that in his community his people and how people like to believe they they are open and welcoming and and so on but most often they're close-minded and resistance to change and and they, they they don't want to hear this jesus that challenge the way it is and this kind of attitude maybe find its place, maybe manifests itself in the high expectation we put on our leaders, and at the same time the struggle we have with our own action. I believe, we believe, we believe, I, you, we believe in something, and often we do not deliver on it. On some occasion, we do the complete opposite to our belief. We don't like when someone show up and confront us. We prefer to keep it 
to keep the image we have of ourselves of good person, always perfect, always good. And once in a while, there's an inspired new leader or old leader. Jesus is an example, but there's people all around us these days that will invite us to take a good look at ourselves. Not to shame us or belate us, but to invite us to see how can you get better? How can you be better? How can you do better? How can you be truly transformed and live a better life? And that's what I wish you this week is when this will happen maybe this week or in near future when this will happen because it happened sometimes not to go on the defensive not to say no we don't want to hear that we don't want anything new uh i have enough problem as it is not to be on the defensive but to listen and see how you can improve how can you open yourself how can you question yourself and hopefully how can I or you or we can be better to grow to move forward to be what we are called to be I wish you can do this even if it's not always pleasant I know but I wish you have the courage to do this and I wish you're taking care of yourself. Here it's still snow, 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 and snow, and cold weather. So take care of yourself. And until next time, I remain the lectionary man, Reverend Stefan Vermette, and see you soon. Bye-bye.